In this video, I'm going to use some hillbilly ingenuity to build a brake bleeding tool that I can use to bleed the brakes on my vehicles without any help. All I need is a soda bottle and some vinyl tubing. The vinyl tubing that I've got is a 5 16 outside diameter and a 3 16 inside diameter. I got this out of the plumbing section at the home improvement store. I need a 5 16 drill bit. I'm going to drill a hole right here in the top of the cap so that we can slide our tubing down in it. I've got a 3 30 seconds drill bit. We're going to do a small little vent hole off to the side of the, of the cap. Alright, just put the tube through the lid and you want the length of the, the hose to be all the way to the bottom of the container. Of course you want a nice clean dry container. Alright now we're ready to start bleeding the brakes and what I did was just clean off the reservoir here. What we're going to do is fill this all the way up to about the cap level because having replaced that long brake line we're going to have we're going to go through quite a bit of fluid here to fill it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour that in. If we spill brake fluid on the outside, we want to clean that up right away. Brake fluid is pretty corrosive. Try to keep any contaminants out of the brake fluid. I'm going to bleed all four wheels. Make sure there's no air in the system whatsoever. I, having replaced that really long brake line, there's a lot of air in it right now. What you want to do is bleed the line that's furthest from the master cylinder or from the ABS module. Now, in this truck, the ABS module is located about halfway down the truck underneath about underneath the driver's side extended cab. It's down underneath there. The line that would be the longest, in my estimation anyway, could be wrong, is the passenger side tire. You see that we have you see that we have these lines coming off and they go down underneath and down the frame rail to the ABS module and then two lines come right back up. You can see this newer one here, this green one. I replaced that a while back goes right into the wheel right here for the driver's side wheel and then the other line you can see it coming down here goes down to the front crosses over and goes over to the passenger side so I'm going to bleed this tire first and then I, th I think the next longest would be the driver's side here so I'll bleed that one next and then passenger side rear driver's side rear so I'll bleed in that pattern. I've got the hose underneath dot three brake fluid here you want to make sure the end is underneath the level submerged completely we're going to take this end and we're going to slide it over the nipple end of the bleeder valve. I took the wheel off just so we can get a better look at what I'm doing here. You don't have to take your wheel off if you're going to try this. And I've got a 10 millimeter box end wrench here. I'm going to go ahead and slide that on. Then I'm going to take the end of my hose here and put it over the top of the bleeder valve. Alright, just loosening the bleeder valve a little bit. You can see the brake fluid starting to come out. I'm going to go into the truck. I'm going to pump the brakes. I'm going to make sure that it's nothing but a solid stream of fluid. I don't want any bubbles in this line. And the air that gets pushed out, as you can see, it's already pushing air out that's in the, just that's what was in the tube. The air gets pushed out. The fluid stays in. And with the air coming out, that vent hole there will kind of help keep the bottle from getting pressurized. So now I'll pump the brakes until I get a nice solid stream of fluid. I'm going to keep an eye on my master cylinder here. I certainly don't want that to get emptied. So I'll keep an eye on that making sure I keep that full at all times. Alright, I've pushed the brakes about seven or eight times and there's no air coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and then carefully I'm going to pinch this off and pull quickly so that I don't lose brake fluid all over the driveway. There we go. Okay, now it's on to the driver's side front. You know, you can do this without taking your wheel off. I like to keep the hose above the bleeder valve. That way it goes up and down into the, into the bottle see the hose there. I'm going to go ahead and get in the truck and uh, push the brakes.
and it looks like there's no air in the hose. So this one's good. Now I'm going to go back to the passenger side rear tire. All right, with two more wheels to go, you can see I've gone through quite a bit of fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and top this back off. Try to keep the fluid clean, not get anything down in it or in your container. Okay, I'm back at this. I had to stop because the bleeder screw in the caliper was fused and I rounded off the nut and I ended up taking the brake caliper off and clamped it to my workbench and still couldn't get the bleeder screw out with a pair of vice grip pliers. So I had to go to town and get a brand new caliper just because of that stupid screw. Look what you did, you little jerk. Anyway, got the 10 millimeter rat wrench on, hose, pop bottle, let's go to bleeding. All right, this one doesn't have any more air in it, so this one's good. We'll move on to the next wheel. Brakes work. Well, it was easy as that. A simple soda pop bottle and some tubing from the hardware store, and I was able to bleed my brakes all by myself. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Remember, if plan A fails, you've got 25 letters left. Thanks for watching. God bless.